We'll see him wait going all the way. <laughs> Well, so we're here. Fifth label event. Can you believe it? I can't believe it. I'll tell you that much. The pods are persuading. <laughs> peer pressure. Peer pressure. I was never good at peer pressure. Yeah, that's why you're here, bro. Hello. <laughs> it's the first show I think I haven't been nervous. I've, uh, I'm usually very anxious and, and panicking, but we can't do it anymore. We've got a labyrinth with massive superstar. We've got a homegrown oh, hero. Papa McKenna. Belfort. Don't with that. Danny. 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 You are coming. You're 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 coming. Cut from the old school, as you can tell. <laughs> Some people will go away and go, fuck, I was not a good name. Yeah, that's, that's the main thing is everyone to be, to be happy. Um, which always happens every single time, so I'm expecting this one. Everyone's always happy apart from tour. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm always married after. Next day I wake up with the worst anxiety, so it'd be nice to wake up anxiety free. <laughs> what time are everyone shit themselves? Yeah. Everyone needs to be on my level. Kill him, what's the lovely hair done? So is it time to go then? Hold on, hold on before we go. One, just for one minute. Is that all? Hold on. So we cut. One minute. Take <laughs> <laughs> it off me. Yeah, jump on the floor. Though. Yeah, there's, there's a good there, there. Tell me, get in there quick. Right. Let's go. Let's have a good show. Let's go. Get up, boys. I'm going to go first. Ladies and gentlemen, can you please take your seats? Come into the stage. Put your hands together for Tommy and Tyrone. Thanks everyone for coming out. Welcome back to another live show with Whiskey and Wade. Make Woo! some noise for ourselves. Really thought this was going to be my, or my last one was the last one, but <laughs> Tommy keeps pressing me to do more and more and more. I know that Tyrone, uh, look at him, he's a bag of nerves. <laughs> After the last one, it was unbelievable and Tyrone was like, Tommy, I'm not doing them again. But here we are. If you've you watched the promo, that's exactly what happened. Like, I said, Tommy, I'm not doing this unless you get Labyrinth for your cousin on. He went and he came Hold back to me about an hour later. Got Labyrinth. I went, fuck! I went, well, when he, when he could catch it, because I know he could catch it personally, I know he's never going to go. He hates these kind of but things. But you know what? I was, I was smart with the way I'd done it because Kikachi just won the title. So I was like, I'll phone him now. I'll strike while he's on cloud name. And I'll phone him and he's like, oh, I certainly. He was but, buzzing because he heard Labyrinth once. He's like, happy days, Labyrinth. So. I was forced into this night, but hopefully it goes well. No, it will go well. They always go well. Like, this is the fifth one. Throne says it's the last one, but... <laughs> it's, but like a, it's like a farewell for Wolf Tones. Every feel I'm here. <laughs> you! But, anyway, like I said, thanks for everyone for coming out. And if you just went to the shows before, we've had amazing guests. You know, we've had AFC say, Q Radio's King. We had John Sue on the last podcast. He's done a song, Rob. It's unbelievable. Where is he? He's telling you. There he's out. Shout out, Big John. Here we go. I was born in Belfast. <laughs> <laughs> but now, uh, unbelievable. And uh, we had Michael Conlon was on. Big fucking boxing star. And Jamie Conlon now promoting Tyrone. Yeah. He's around that big show last week in the Odyssey. Woo. Tyrone topped the bill. Hopefully I have a better week than I had last week. No, it didn't, it didn't go according to plan, did it? <laughs> what I, I, I thought last week, I thought it was boxing. Well, I went out and I said, you know what? Tommy's right. Keep on the job. Just box. I'll do well. Fucking fourth round. Boom. And what the fuck was that? We ripped I had to take a knee. 
And then his fifth round, he whacked me. I swear to God, even if I wanted to get up, I was paralyzed. My legs, you know, I was telling my legs, get up, get up. And I could go get out there, own. He's like, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Did you ever see someone give you the finger with a gloves on? <laughs> but now it was, he's the first boxer to have a granite chin and glass ribs. <laughs> <laughs> Unreal, but now, nah, throw what's happening in with your career. You retired, you came back. I'm not going nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> Nah, retirement life isn't for me. I just got eating too much, drinking too much, going to Davenies too much. Uh -oh. So that's just fucking keep at it. Keep at it. it. You know, that's it. He, need, he needs the routine. That's what, you know, his anxiety is doing the shows. He's always going on about this anxiety, anxiety. Turns out he's riddled where he hates thee. <laughs> and I seen the last show, I had to go and get... Go to the doctors after the, after the yeah. night after the last show. I was like, there's something fucking wrong with me, Tommy. I can't keep it, keep feeling like this. So I went and got ADHD and riddled with it. Riddled. The back teeth. He has like the most severe kiss of all time. <laughs> what happened? You, you had to do an assessment. You to get, if you have like six out of 19 symptoms, this guy had 18 out of 19. <laughs> the father cheated. It was that good. Didn't even study. So yeah. We've got him on the meds, we've got him on the Ritalin. <laughs> He's all right. <laughs> and uh, know the boxing, give him the routine and, you know, keeps them all, keeps them leveled out, you know. <laughs> but uh, Tyrone said, he said this week, I don't think we've won a fight since we started this podcast. We haven't, we haven't won. <laughs> so maybe it's all you, these are all scuddy bastards. all scuds. Fuck <laughs> sick. <laughs> Before the last show, I was getting ready for a big fight and everyone was cheering all, yeah. I got more ballot stock than two. It's like, <laughs> fuck's sake. But uh, our first guest on the stage, isn't it? That's someone who never gets her ballot stock done. No. It's he man. actually wins, Fitz. Yes, he wins. You know, and I, you, if, <laughs> see, before he comes on, I'm actually shocked that he's here tonight because he's the hardest person to get hold of. It was actually this group of people over here. Sure we're in his ear and made him come. <laughs> that's, his, that's his fan base right there. They force him onto all these podcasts. And interviews. So. But there's something about people from Ali Town are just fucking weird. Is that <laughs> <laughs> no offense, but like, <laughs> but yeah, people, you know, we find it hard to believe because me and him always get bit, and the next guest always wins. But we all train together. We all came through the ranks, and we actually used to be good. We used to win all the time. <laughs> and um, until we found drink. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. And then look what's happened. Fuck's sake. But <laughs> folks, this man made history by becoming the first ever super featherweight champion of the world from Ireland. Mm. He's from Andy Town. He's the Apache. Make some noise for the Andy Town Apache, Anthony Nicocacci! Yeah. <laughs> Don't walk a catch. Yeah. <laughs> You're over here. Just sitting over here. Two miles on. <laughs> Fuck's sake, I can't believe you're not even in the house. I can't believe here. I can't believe they agreed to this here. I can't believe it. <laughs> you bring them belts everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy got me at a good time. Straight after the fight, straight on the phone to me. I thought we'll do the live podcast. Feeling super confident and happy. No problem. Absolutely dreaded it all day. Super he, nervous. He has been trying to pull out of this all week. He's been texting me. Have you spoke to Tommy? We shouldn't be doing this show. I think it's too close to my feet. <laughs> Yeah, you have. Tyrone was doing that. I, I actually, on the way over here, I nearly threw the car on the wall to change my mind at the last minute. You know what I mean? <laughs> he actually said to me, oh, Tommy, I was like trying to promote the show and all. He's like, oh, Tommy, uh, there may be something wrong or like I am. I'll be training for a big fight. He says, when is it? The, when is it? The 30th, 21st of September. 21st of September. He's like, oh, no, so you have a full fucking <laughs> two months to train. What are you talking about? <laughs> But Just any excuse. See, Tom, or see, Kakashi, any time he has to do something, he, all, he doesn't turn up or he, doesn't, he does something. He had a homecoming world champion. All his mates over there organized a double dagger bus to put, bring him down from his house to South Link, where the boxing club is and his mad house is. And there was thousands of people there. We were all there for hours. There was, there was a, what do you call him, the trampoline. There's, the, there was the, um, but, uh, what do you call him when you bounce on? <laughs> Bouncy castles. Bouncy castles, that's the one. And bouncy, there's bouncy castles, there's ice cream shops, there's pizza for free. 
And he, there was kids everywhere from all over Andy Townford. And we were sitting there. He said, you're at six. Got the quarter past six. I said, where the fuck is he? Tax him. I ain't not coming. I was all right. I was all right walking down the street, but I'm knocking down the street and a double decker bus. You know what I mean? Then we had to sign his dad. Doing that. We had to sign his dad up to his house. He screamed at his dad, get the fuck out. I'm not going down there. I'm not going down there. And then I think it was Homer went up. Man, listen, you have to go down there. Listen, I made, it, I made it down anyway. He made... Not in a double decker bus. He made bus. an open top bus go home with him know. on it. He said, right, get rid of the open top bus and then I'll come down. He came down and everyone loved it. And how Isn't did you feel now though, come down and you see the whole district there? I was unreal. It was unreal. I, I wasn't expected. I, I, I was embarrassed, you know what I mean? It's, it's not every day that you have to walk into a crowd like that, you know what I mean? And I'm quiet enough, so it was amazing. It was hundreds of people there. Ice cream trucks, as Tyrone says, and we bouncy things. I mean, <laughs> there was uh, there was a goopy crowd there, and I was I wasn't feeling great there walking down, especially in a double decker bus. As a normal person, who the hell wants to turn up in a double decker bus? You know what I mean? <laughs> Everyone, we were all busting to get on. It, so <laughs> you the bus. I couldn't wait. I got out of work early and everything. I have to get on this bus. But, but here, uh, even that, that week, this is this sums up Kikaj as well. That week. He was invaded to Saudi Arabia by the, the his accent he's called. He's like the, the main man in Saudi Arabia. He invited to catch in his missus over first class flights, paid in this luxury hotel, getting tickets to the 5 E5 Addy Hearn show. Uh, it was a massive event, probably proud to be looked after. He turned it down, he said, nah, he's alright. I don't want free tickets to Saudi Arabia. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I just I'm not great in front of crowds. Uh, I'm getting more used to it now that I won the belt spot. I mean, yeah. Everyone loves you know, it. He has, he has a history of not showing up things. Like you never used to show up the train and all. I know exactly, <laughs> exactly. Do you know what I mean? He's still one. I know. Like I always say, Aldo is like a genetic freak. Where the less he trains, the better he performs. So Tommy's texting me leading up to the last fight, saying, Aldo you better only be training once a day, you know what I mean? <laughs> because if you're training any more than twice, I'm putting money on the other fella. <laughs> <laughs> and I was joking, we used to go running when we were kids, and we'd run to the gym, it's around the corner from us. He'd buy, he'd buy a pack of figs, paying for, they were for his dad, and we'd walk around the corner, he'd be smoking before we go training. It's all, we've changed now, we've changed now. <laughs> we actually used to go down to the old Irelands, me, Tommy and Tyrone, trying to escape wee Patty McAllister, and go over and buy cigars and smoke them outside the hotel. Uh, <laughs> that, was, that was pre, it was pre a fight ritual. <laughs> <laughs> like three, three 13 year olds sitting on the wall smoking cigars. <laughs> Biggest fight of our life. This is a life. Up. This is a life. Three champions. <laughs> <laughs> but we've done just cigars because we thought they were bad, more healthier than. than you don't inhale cigars. <laughs> don't inhale them. Just blow it out. <laughs> but here, what we did say when we were kids and what we said it was one of our dreams was to have a. I think, Having a mural in Belfast is one of the highest honours in Belfast. So how's it feeling now that you, you eventually made your it? Your own street as well. Oh, it's, it feels good. Um, can, looks nothing like me, like, but <laughs> I mean, it's still a nice gesture, like, but... Uh, <laughs> Listen, I think it looks good. Who else has a fucking mural about the place, don't mean, so. I know, I know. I'm just waiting on someone writing dickhead on it or something. <laughs> that's I mean. that's, I, that's I coming, that's that coming. Yet. <laughs> heard somebody complain they're cancelled, scarring the kids. Aye, what the hell's that? <laughs> I look like a fucking elf. Excuse my language, excuse my language. No, but all those, listen, all jokes aside, that is a big, big honour. Like, and no, it is. You're up on that wall forever. Yeah. And you're in the history books forever. Like, how, how have you adjusted to being world champion? Uh, it's just normal. I don't know. I don't know. I'm world champion. <laughs> it feels nice. It feels nice to, to finally make a dream come true. It's 25 years of sacrifice and, and dedication. But, you know, I mean, <laughs> I finally got there years. and I'm just, I'm over the moon. I'm over yeah. the moon. Ah. Do you feel like your life changed more since? I've got more money. I was broke. <laughs> oh. I was absolutely skint before. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, that's uh, my, my, wee girl, my wee girl works in JD and she was getting 25% off all stuff. And uh, all those in buying a pair of goodies. And she went, did my daddy tell you, get the 25% off? Yeah, I don't need 25%. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loaded now. Look at him. 
That was a joke. That was a joke. You know, I thought she would have laughed. She just looked me straight in the face. and like, all oh, right, right. As soon as he becomes world champion, he gets Rolexes and fucking oh, these cars. That. Like, that. That's a Dolex. That's not that. You, you, you've changed. I've seen the looky looky man in Spain there. <laughs> I told, that's an orange. It's happened. You've went from training up in Turf Laws to training in Spain. Yeah. You're getting, you're getting stuck up now, though. What's it like over? It's not that. It's that trained all my life. I usually lived in a, a caravan, I've done the caravan, I've done the house. I thought I'd mix it up a wee bit and, yeah. and go for a bit of sun. You deserve yeah. it. It was nice, it was nice. You deserve it. Yeah, I got that on bronze, it could be time for the show as well, do you know what I mean? Well, you've got a massive fight in this here um, against... A, a Josh Warrington. An Absolutely. axe. Per, a person that, that fought an axe boxer here, Carl Framley. So you're going out to take the revenge. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. Is I really, he's he's five and old, uh, the the Irish. So I want to. Is go. he five and old? Five and old. Five and old. And I have to get, I have to get him back to the jackal. Yeah. So we got your bit from them, Martin Lindsay. Uh, There's uh, pa- the Halen brothers. A pa- couple Halen, of them. Oh, I, Halen. I just heard that stuff by the way. I've never checked it out before. How is camp going for this one? Is it any different now that you're more you more confident? Are you more excited? Like. I don't know. It's just as uh, soon as I, I I went into that fight, a, a massive underdog, and mm. um, I've always believed in my pot- in, in my potential. Do you know what I mean? And that day, I just said, um, "Listen, you know he's gonna have to kill me," and, and that's the way I approached it. And um, that's the way I'm gonna approach every fight from here. You know, there's that possibility that the next fight, you know, it could be getting stretched out. But I'm okay with that. <laughs> I am okay with that. You know what I mean? You know, yeah. you you use a, a, a classic wee West Belfast move. You had him a wee sly dig, although. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> sly listen, dig, listen, listen, listen. dig. I hit him in the third round, and uh, the referee, as he hit me, as the referee said, break, and I hit him. It made have swung the fight around, but <laughs> I'm, still, I'm the world champion now. It doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. You know I mean? We're over that event. Yes. I know we've got Labyrinth in the building, but he's not the only singer. If anyone has seen his social media recently, oh, God, yeah, he'd be singing like fuck. I've only once seen him on Instagram. He's done a promo for this fight. And he's just saying, sweet car. If you give us a few. Well, gives a, gives a couple. No, sweet it. car. Sing, sing, sing. Go. Oh, no, no, gives a couple. No, I'm not singing. You're not bad. But, like, you're not bad. We sing it. It's going to be out in a few weeks. You'll be able to hear it. What? It's a preview. It's the worst experience in my life. I mean, worst experience. What I happened to, in that? I was in a burning car. I happened to sing Sweet Caroline. Man, I swear to God. It was. You, you took it was, off an hour, didn't you? Ah, uh, yes. They, they took me up on one end. We, what do you call those things? I don't know. I don't even like heights. It was uh, freaking out the whole time. But Guy Ritchie w- produced it. And it was just, it was a complete, you know, it was a great experience, but a horrible experience at the exact same time. Do you know what I mean? For a person like me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what, what did it say right then? 21st. 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 And a massive show, although. On that last show, you actually, it was an Arabic show in Surrey. You stole the, you were probably the, like the big surprise of the night. Yeah. So you're looking to steal the show again here again on in London. Listen, I want, I just want to win this fight. You know what I mean? It's 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 a massive fight. This is the type of fight that'll change my life forever. And you know, again, you know, I want to get him back for the jackal. And I thought at the time the jackal was going to win. So he's a he's a very good fighter, and I'm just raring to go. I'm shocked that he's younger than you. Yeah. I thought it like see when I when I got matches it's like he's been past it, he's like 38, 39. He's actually oh. Watch his head here. He goes in my head flat out, you know what I mean? But I mean <laughs> he, he's a dirty fighter, but I can be dirty too, as you've seen. Third what? round. <laughs> crack him on the brick. Oh whack him on the brick. <laughs> <laughs> well what's the dream after you smash warning, you know, what's the what's the plans afterwards? Uh if I beat Warrington, Saudi Arabia in December, fight my oh. mandatory. So Are you ever gonna weird. fight in Belfast? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I, been, the I money fought is. in Belfast recently. I mean, the last time I fought in Belfast, it was absolutely horrible. Horrible. I mean, I put on two stone. I was sitting on the toilet. Actually, when the camera came in, I got five minutes. It was a bad experience. So I'm all right going away to, to fight. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm used to traveling. Yeah. What about uh, me and Tyrone's looking to come back wins here? Can you get us all <laughs> six rounds on the show? <laughs> Well, hey, I'll transfer that out. I'll put a word in with someone. <laughs> Frank Warren's a tight get so you know what I mean? I, I doubt he'll give you all. It'll have to be Hanley ones, you know, because oh, yeah. we can't afford it. Journey man, journey <laughs> man. We can't afford to get paid again. Fuck's sick. Yeah. Would you, 
ever move around Aldi Town? Have you you make enough money or you stay in Aldi Town? No, I'm an Aldi Town man. Ah, Fair good man. man. Up in Aldi Town. Fucking love Listen, the place. Love the place. It was house hunting last week and he was Should saying he's... fucking looking at their houses up in Strand Mills. Oh, that's what I'm saying. He was looking at all these houses and he said, what's your Aldi Town man? He said, oh, I was just looking at these. I'm not going to actually move out. No, no, no. I'm Aldi Town until I die. That's Other good, that's that. good. Hey, speaking of fights, the big show tomorrow night. We've got Chris Souter fighting Andy Malone over in Gertrude. Uh, what way do you see that fight going? Uh, I don't know, mate. I don't know. I haven't even really been watching too much about it. Um, Andy Malone looks like a big lad. And uh, Chris, Chris Souter could have his work cut out. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to watching it, to be fair. <laughs> on uh, undercard, at the team support is going to be... Uh, Paddy. Paddy McDonald versus the Burr. Yeah. Wait, yeah. did you see Paddy's last fight in, in Ulster Hall? I didn't see it. I didn't see it. But I did see that the Burr's 38. Didn't you see it? For absolute spoof. He <laughs> is definitely <laughs> in his 50s, 100%. <laughs> but Paddy's, I reckon Paddy will do a business. He'll do yeah, a business. 100%. He's looking slim, mean. Huh? We're just backstabbing me in front of you. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. No, joking. Go ahead. Say Nothing new, you know what I mean? Nothing <laughs> new. Now, Paddy's flying and Paddy's lost so much weight and uh, he's, he's actually fucking been training from January, from before, so I fancy Paddy big time anyway. No, no, I fancy him too. He was out the back there and he, he wouldn't even have a beer. He's looking slim and ready to yeah. rock, so. Yeah. Paddy McDonald for the win, 100. Oh, yeah, so, folks, without further ado, okay, let's put our hands together for the one and only Paddy the Dagger Woo! McDonald! Whoa, 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 what's happening, Dennis? <laughs> Tommy said to me, Mount down the fucking Dennis, me, you, Tyrone, and the Kakachi, because he's a big lanyard, right? <laughs> and our labyrinth is doing it, and he, I thought you meant fucking like pleasure, boys. <laughs> Fucking you wouldn't be invaded with pressure boys. I went and bought the fucking socks the same as him at all. <laughs> That's my microphone hanging out, by the way. <laughs> we black hang hanging out there. There'll be the far right people will be putting me out. There hasn't been a dick pic set in the whole of fucking Belfast since the fucking Pleasure Boys came here. <laughs> <laughs> see, the, see, the night, see the night that it happened? I, this is the funniest bit of the whole thing. I was coming out of the gym, right? And they, <laughs> I know that's a hard bit to believe. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck up, dickhead. <laughs> like the Pleasure Boys, I, I get something put in your mouth and you'll not be able to talk. <laughs> But I was coming down the stairs and they were all sitting eating like dinner. I didn't know who they were. And Fra, the manager in here, was like, Bally, come here over a minute. I was telling him you're called the dagger. And your mom came over, he was about 60. And he was like, uh, yeah, I'm called the anchor. And I went, what? And he was like, I'm called the anchor. And I went, what do you mean the anchor? And he went, <laughs> 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 And he fucking lifted it up. Like, it took four attempts, right? <laughs> And on the end of it, he had an anchor tattooed in the end of his cat. Right? <laughs> and he went, Frav was telling me that you have a fucking dagger. Can I see it? And I went, no. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, why not? And I went, because it didn't bring my binoculars. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I went to Port of Ferry. I went down to Port of Ferry, done a gig, came back at 2 o'clock in the morning, my phone. You know when your phone's going off the fucking hook? Like, well, a couple of drug dealers, you know the crack, right? <laughs> He's only out of my Gabriel cunt, right? 
But that, that phone was going, da, 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 da. I looked at them and hear me, what the fuck, all the fucking videos were in here, and I was going to wake her up and go, will you see these? And then I went, oh, hold on a wee minute. I'm not fucking showing her at her. I think she got short changed. <laughs> And then the next morning when she woke up, she was coming down the stairs and me fucking her sure, because like, it's everywhere, everybody's seen it. Then I was like, did you see the videos from the Dabney? And she went, no. Hey, me, do you want to see them? And she went, no, I was there. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of them's still riding her. <laughs> Don't even have to fly over, he just books her from England. <laughs> <laughs> Can I sit down now? Can I sit down? <laughs> Anto, don't, don't you be playing with my microphone now? <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Polly. That was a fucking laugh. Give it up for Polly McDonald, folks. Yeah. So, oh, Polly, you've a, you've a big fight tomorrow night. Big Look at this. Fight. Four boxers on the stage. Well, uh, well two. two boxers. <laughs> two, two podcasters. <laughs> <laughs> two, two triers and two winners. <laughs> It's fucking mad though. You started hanging about with me and started doing stand up, and I started hanging about with you, and I now got my bollocks knocked down. <laughs> At least you're winning, buddy. <laughs> I haven't won since I started hanging out with you. I know, I know. How do you feel about the morning, it? I feel confident, do I? Fucking West Belfast every time. Was it? Yeah. Get catchy next after this one. What? Get catchy next after this one. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm too heavy for him. <laughs> I, I don't know, he puts on some weight. <laughs> Listen, I can put the weight on, no problem. That's a nice, <laughs> wee, that's a nice handy one for me. No, oh, no, oh, 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 fuck. Not saying hello. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's fans with a belt in the chains, you know oh, how it is. Probably. Since he got them belts, like, fuck me, you know. I got a belt out of TK Maxx, didn't change me, you know, though. <laughs> so, Pat, how do you feel your last fight, you were flying in Ulster Hall? Like you fucking, you've done something that most boxers dream of, a lot of, well, us these he's done it, like, no, I mean, we're right, but there's a, a, most boxers dream of fighting in Ulster Hall, you've done it twice, like, what, what was it like? Amazing, I, do you know the best, like I said this here, the best bit about it was my dad, obviously, he was a boxer, and he used to take me when I was a kid to watch the Ulsters, and he was like, I'd love to see you fighting here one night, and I was like, fuck that, you know? Yeah. But I think when I done stand up in it, I was like, there you go, I headlined it for you. And he's like, it's not the fucking same, you're still a wanker. <laughs> but he, the last year when I done a big road boy, like he was just glowing, you could just see him walking yeah. out, like he loved it. And then this year he was fucking even better again, like because it was a better performance for him, you know. Yeah. Um, only the hamstring went in the first round, like I reckon I'd have fucking tuck ahead of him in the second round. Like, it was, Listen, we've all got excuses. <laughs> Uh, if, I, if I had a better body, if I had best. a better body, I wouldn't have been dropped. Like, I phoned them to and I was like, "What are you saying?" They went, "Calm down. We'll we'll tell you what you're saying. You get away with it." <laughs> so uh, the morning, stiff opposition against the power, like like Aldo said, uh, he's he's got the heads on. Him. He's 38. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly 38. I thought he was 52. I was feeling sorry for the fucker. <laughs> you know, he's like somebody from my yard, isn't he? Yep. But. After the fight tomorrow, you also, uh, you're headlining this is even a for, is it the first time you've headlined it? No, 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 I've done it twice last year, man. Oh, I've done it twice, look at your big shot now. <laughs> what, you're headlining, what date's at? 4th of October. 4th of October, so if you haven't got tickets, come to see us, Make sure you get them. Tyrone's on out there headlining. I know, it's, it's not worth it, don't do it. <laughs> you don't want to do it. I Hopefully your own goes better than my own. I fucking loved it, I loved it. Everybody says to me, because I do prefer smaller rooms, we take rooms, like see doing a gig to 80 people, it's fucking magic, mm. really wee small, sweaty room. You but like that better? Aye, aye. Just same intimate. boxing, I think, I think there's more pressure when you're fighting in a wee small area than, than, than a big stadium. No, I get you. Because like, 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 you don't know half the people, most of the people at the stadium, but in the small, intimate, they go to all, you know everyone. No, you I know what that. I mean? Well, everybody says I would have hated it, but last year, I, I tell you, the first time I had it like, for myself, because I had performed at it, was they handed me the dates and they were like, look, you've sold out two waterfronts. Cabin Bridges was on the same day. So we're planning to put you in the SSE. Mm -hmm. Here's some potential dates. And the 12th of May came up and that's my birthday. And I've never, thank you. <laughs> thank you, that was my ma, was it? Was my <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> They're buzzing for you. I, I've never had a fucking good birthday. No, the big birthday. Uh, like, no, but. Oh, uh, he hadn't had a good birthday. My 18th, my <laughs> mom was like, Your 18th, we're going to throw a party. I went, Whatever you do, don't throw it on a Friday night because everybody goes to DC on a Friday night. So, unless it's in the DC, 
Don't fucking have it the yeah. Friday night. When did you have it? A fucking Friday, Friday night. Empty, was it? In the fucking town. No more than same food. I used to be Cavanagh's bar. Yeah. You had it in there. No cunt turned up. <laughs> I wasn't because it was a Friday party. It was because of you. Well, that's my point. But I, <laughs> my granny and her mates turned up, so I, I still done a fucking... I done the plate dance. You know what the plate dance is? No, uh, that's it. What's up? Right, that? yeah, go dance. ahead. You brought it up, I want to see it. You, 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 you aren't paying me enough for that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you stripped down. My mate Heskey says, right. Mum would do the fucking plate dance. There's fuck all happening here. My granny and all her mates is sitting there. We go in, strip naked, two plates, and go out and start fucking dancing with the two fucking plates. <laughs> my dad will have fucking bliss. <laughs> <laughs> I got fucked in the bar, mate, team. There wouldn't be a big enough plate for you, Catchy. I need three plates. You need three plates. Ah, <laughs> big turkey tray. <laughs> <laughs> That's an absolute lie as well. Like, so whoever said that, I don't know where it came from. I tell you what, it's, it's like a prawn. It's see, like that. See, 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 I grew up with you, and I thought there's something wrong with me because the cat don't see in your cock. I seen the porn star's cock and your cock, and I was like, there's something wrong with me. I have a, what the fuck's wrong with my cock? Listen. Fuck you, yes, don't be talking about my cock like the fucking 400 <laughs> people here, do you know what I mean? That's right. Enough of that shit chat. He doesn't Mickey think Hawkins is sitting there, he doesn't, he doesn't look happy, do you know what I mean? He doesn't think it's big because it's the smallest one in his house. <laughs> 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 Enough of the dick listen. talk here, fuck's sake, do you do know you, what I mean? Uh, would you get nervous more for the fates or would you get nervous more for, for comedy? Do you know what? I, I didn't get nervous for both of them, Nick. Do you not? Nah. Fuck. That's weird. Like, I get should, nervous for them all. You should get nervous for fucking the fate. Scrap, no. I just haven't been like. I thought it would have been first one because I don't know anything about him. I haven't seen him boxing with the other two I had. Yeah. So I don't know why I'm not nervous. I'm just not. I'm just. Because you know, you put in the work, like, and everyone yeah. can see it. Probably you're fucking, you're half from on in a good way like yeah 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 you drop down from super heavy down the late heavy so <laughs> give it up for Paddy's weight loss folks <laughs> on Paddy's show where's your man off the front of Pringle box <laughs> <laughs> are you in to see me because I don't eat you no more you cuddy <laughs> that is a fucking unbelievable moustache it, it is an unbelievable moustache give it up for the moustache in the front row yeah <laughs> Give it up, <laughs> where are you? Where are you from? Of course you fucking did. If you had a talk with a Poglas accent, there I was leaving. That's fucking unbelievable, mate. I swear to God, that is fucking. It is glad. impressive. Impressive. It is impressive. Better than your dick, aren't they? <laughs> Red folks. On that note, we're gonna have a short interval. But before we break up, we want to let this know we're doing a raffle, okay? And it's all the money's going to our friend Ryan Curtis, who is recovering. Yeah, clap it up for Ryan. He's recovering from a, a broken neck. He's come on leaps and bounds. He's back up on his feet. And uh, so we're trying to raise money for him. We've got a Saint glove from the world champion, Aldo Kikazi. We've got two. How many tickets have we got, Paddy? One or two for Paddy's show in the... Hey, in the hey. Two tickets for Paddy's show in the Odyssey. We've got a, a month's membership for Trave and a month's membership for Lab Fitness. And we also have a Saint poster by the one and only Lab Fitness. So make hey. sure... Somebody's going to be going around where I'm selling the pallets. Make sure you just dig deep, get the, get the <laughs> shillings out. Yep. And we'll see after the break. Yep. Right, folks? Give it up for Aldo and Paddy. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Are you ready for the second half of the show? Please welcome back to the stage, Tyrone and Tommy. We had a great first half. Hope everyone enjoyed it. I'm Nicky Katz here, very own world champion, Paddy McDonald, superstar comic. So now the next 
act who's coming out, you know, it's my cousin. He'd Mag be the s <laughs> my he'd, cousin. He'd be the sad once he gets on stage, he's gonna be the second best singer on stage. I after me. me. <laughs> He's asking me to do the do that one, but we'll see how it goes. So listen, folks, it was almost hanging in a balance because... Now, have you thought it was hard for me to get on this show? The album was impossible to get on this. It wasn't impossible, but them fucking racists in the town near racked on us. <laughs> I had the manager on the phone. I had his wife, I had his mummy on the phone. He said, what the fuck's going on over? Are we all right? Yeah, so they, were we panic, in, they were trying to pull the show. I was like, if, if Brinfy goes, I go, <laughs> I walk. He had his fingers crossed. Hopefully he pulls it. Hopefully he pulls it. <laughs> but I, what I done, right? I took, I took my life into my own hands. And I ran over to Sandy Road to get my hair cut. <laughs> oh, over to the belly of the beast. I walked, I walked, or sorry, I got a tax message. Woke up, got a tax message from Tommy. We picture. He's in the belly of the beast in the middle of Sandy Road. I was like, get out of there. You've got a show tonight. He's like, I don't care. I'm getting in to see what it's like. And, he, and there, it was nothing happening. It was nothing happening not over. So, folks, the media is hyping it up like extreme ways because I was there in the barbers, black barbers. The barbers was packed, black guys of all shades, and n nobody touched us. We're still here. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. That we made it anyway, and then uh, people people were going, "Hey, so Lavrov's your cousin? How is he your cousin? If you're from Lanarkshire and he's from London?" <laughs> so basically, what it is, my dad went to London back in the day when he was young, right? He went over to work. Now my dad doesn't have a trade in anything, so I don't know what kind of work he was going over to do. Look, <laughs> but see now. He drives a fucking black taxi, so what's that tell you? <laughs> but uh, he went over and he met my mummy. And my mummy was a black woman who just happened to like a bit of milk in her coffee. <laughs> and my dad got a taste of the brown sugar and here I am. <laughs> but you see, Labram's mummy, she wasn't too fond of the white meat, you know. Like, she wouldn't have a, a Danny Sausage in her fry, you know what I mean? <laughs> she stick the Caribbean flavors. So, that's his mummy and my mummy's two sisters. So, that's how it is, right? So, people are going, oh, fuck, you're talking shit. If I'm talking shit, how is he here? I was worried. <laughs> I was worried. See, look, this whole build-up. Everyone was saying Labyrinth isn't coming. It's all bullshit. We're just trying to sell tickets. And then when he was going to pull out last week, I was like, fuck me, people aren't going to believe he actually got him. Oh, and he just pulled out, so thank God, thank God he's I here. He's exactly. So, folks, without further ado, I want you to give a big, warm West Belfast welcome to my cousin, the man of the moment, global superstar, the best singer in the world, Mr. Larry! Yeah, Labyrinth, come in. This is the most relaxed I've been for a podcast live, just because I know Labyrinth's here and it's, it, can, it can never be topped. This man is a legend. What a legend. So, yeah. Love you too. Yeah. <laughs> so, do you know, yeah. All right, folks, just that learn. We want to talk to them. Come on, man. <laughs> So, as I said, this is, you know, me and Lavrum's cousins. Cousins. And you're my cousin. <laughs> and, you know, your cousins, they're your first friends in life. So, me and we're like besties from, from the root till the fruit, you know, even though we aren't fruits, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Tim first came here back in, might have been 99, 2000, as kids. And when Lana Dune seen. Uh, the first, well, they were used to me as a black man, but when the fucking real McCoy showed up, 
place where I'm metal. My mother said, was like, you know. <laughs> so when I came to Belfast, I was like 11, and there wasn't one black face in sight. <laughs> <laughs> It was like rice and one pea, like just one. I came on a plane and I remember at the time they had um, the biggest record w uh, at the time was like Chocolate Boy. Do you know that song? <laughs> Sweet like chocolate boy. And I came over and I was like, oh, this is, I love that song. And I was like, oh shit, I'm the chocolate boy. <laughs> I was like, I'm the guy. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> a lot of them hadn't seen a black boy. Um, but it was with love though, it wasn't with like ignorance or racism, it was with love and, and that's what I enjoyed about being here. Um, hey. Yeah. yeah. Do you know, so that's, that's the, you know, the trials and tribulations of a, of a black man. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, and a guy like me who has a, a white father, I, I get racist abused on both sides, you know. The, <laughs> The worst racist abuse I received was as a, as maybe I was six, and a, a black girl scratched me and on the arm in school. What are you P one like year one and, and when you're six and it went pink, everyone went what? Everyone started scratching my arms like fuck. <laughs> Look, he's trying to think. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I remember when you, cause you you regularly come over, you visit uh Tommy obviously. Yeah. I remember I used to live beside Tommy. And I used to live next door. Yeah, uh, next door. And my, our my living room looks into Amy's kitchen, and he was away on a trip in, in Germany. I, I'm I'm going up to turn off the TV. I look across. You were throwing your peeping tom. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was <laughs> I was turning off the TV, and I look look into the, the his kitchen. The lights are on, and Amy's dancing. I went, what the fuck she dancing with? And just seen this guy walk across holding. Tommy's kid, I went, Tommy's in fucking Germany? What the fuck is going on here? Eyes on the bell. Amy's cheating, Tommy. She's got a black eye over her. We know she likes black eyes. Hey, for me in the camp, some black guy in the kitchen holding brown. <laughs> Happy and families a, across the road. A taxi, a taxi, drop them off. I ain't gonna go and kill the cop. <laughs> so I phoned you back and then phoned Amy. I said, what's going on? She says, here, Timothy's here. That's, that's Lauren's real name, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I had the phone to her own. I was like, Tyrone, for fuck's sake, you need to relax. <laughs> Stop looking in my window. <laughs> uh. Yeah, no, no way. But you know, like I said, we, we are, your cousins are your first mates, and me and, me and Tim's been our besties. And back in the day, before, he became the star. We had our own band, remember Tim, when we was kids? Young Two Ming. Young Two Ming, yeah, We the used band. to have a band. It was called Young Two Ming, and we used to sit in my mum's uh, like, um, dining room, and we used to write, like, just be throwing lyrics back and forth, and we thought we were like the biggest rap group in the world. <laughs> we, we were the, fucking terrible. I had no speak for yourself. <laughs> so is that why he dropped us when we went solo? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, we were good. <laughs> yeah. So, wait, so, when, so have you always just wanted to be in the music industry? It's always been music, 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 or just, was there any other dreams growing up? Um, do you know what? Do you know you were the first person to teach me how to play the guitar? Yeah, I told do you know that. I learned how to play the guitar? I, 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 I told, told everyone. everyone. <laughs> yeah, so I just remembered that. Do you remember my first song on the guitar was Wonderwall? You yeah. talked because you were learning guitar at that, yeah. um, that spot. That was it. Sorry, yeah. I just remember that. But yeah. um, yes, um, uh, music has kind of like always been in my family. Like, of course, like, you know, Tom, my grandfather is a singer. His daughters and his son were singers. My dad, everyone just like, for some reason, music was just flowing through the blood. Um, there's so many incredible musicians here as well. So there's music flowing through the blood. I know you guys understand about that vibe. And um, I, yeah, there's some amazing musicians, no? Here, this, oh, come on, wonderful. Um, but yeah, um, we just grew up around music. I actually wanted to, um, I was into art and games. I used to fuck around with games all the time. What games? Um, Tagging. 
Tekken got smashed up. <laughs> uh, anyone play uh, what Mario Kart? Ah, uh, N64. No one beats on. me in Mario Kart. N64 oh. was a vibe, bro. Ah, uh, every game on N64 was unbelievable back in the day. Oh. Bro, all, all my all my computer game uh, experiences though were at your house because yeah. I had every. We game. were we were fucking poor as hell, so we used to just go to this guy's house. And play oh, well, Street Fighter 2. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had every game I spoiled rather than, you know, but. Yeah. You, know, you were still shit at the moment? <laughs> I don't know, Ed. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Better than you, anyway. Uh, Toronto, Toronto Call of Duty head now. Yeah. This guy sits and plays Call of Duty, doesn't open his mouth, won't <laughs> talk. <laughs> I just don't want to talk to you. <laughs> Is that right? But, What's it like performing in front of. Massive festivals. You, you're actually a couple of weeks ago, was it? You're performing in. Uh, he was in Coachella, so from Coachella to Davenish. What? <laughs> Here, what's better? Straight up. Davenish or Coachella? On. Oh, come on, let's be real. This is home. Yeah, <laughs> you. Like, the last. No, for real, for real. Like. Like all of my greatest memories are here. Like I literally, I came here when I was ten. Um, my mom sent me over. That, that was my first plane journey to anywhere. And I was like this little 11-year-old, 10-year-old kid. And I was nervous. And I was like, fucking hell, this place is amazing. And every great experience I've had with music, with friends, has started here. So that's why I'm here, literally. Um, and then, of course, so if you ask me Coachella or Lollapalooza, or any of those fucking places, this is the spot, bro. Yeah. <laughs> would you would you ever do a like SSC or a, a tour here? Would you? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna do a tour, um, and th this has got to be one of the spots I come to without a doubt. Um, I remember coming through here. I did a tour with Drake um, years ago. Do you remember? Yeah, we went. Yeah, yeah. We um, and I kind of supported Drake for one of those tours. He's in the shit right now, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> who did? Who won the beef? Who won the beef? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> you tell me who won the beef. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> and do you know what? It's like, it's mad the way life goes, because like you say, you were coming here from you were a kid, and we was reminiscing of a third. Back in your teenage years, you were working with a guy sitting in the front row, Diablo. Right there. <laughs> and he was the first James Belfast rapper of yeah. all time. And uh, they were trying to get on the Fela radio. Well, yeah. Do you remember us trying to get on to Fela FM? We literally made a whole album. We went to Fela, Fela FM. I was making beats with James Dougal. And we were just going ham. And I don't know what happened. Who, who was it that just like, they were just like, no, motherfucker. <laughs> 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 and the beats were hard as well. But anyway. Listen. We but need to talk to We are part of Phil and I look Phil on oh, football. We're, we're, we're part of Phil now. You finally got on it. Finally, you finally made got it. on it. <laughs> Whiskey and weight make dreams happen. <laughs> we're making dreams come true here. <laughs> <laughs> finally, Phil and Phil. But you know, I, it's I always like I made like, it now. Yeah, go ahead. You know, it's always been funny for me watching you become more famous and you trying to deal with it because you're like Tyrone. And an ADHD guy who doesn't really like the spotlight. And we were walking through the town one day. And this was probably after, was Earthquake made have been it. And we were getting stopped in, in Victoria Square. People asking for pictures. And they were saying, fuck this, man. What the fuck, man? So we went and he bought a fake moustache. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do the job. A fake moustache. <laughs> I looked like a black Italian plumber at the time. <laughs> it's like, why is this guy do you, funky? <laughs> how, how do you deal with him? Like, because when I first knew you were sleeping in my bed in his house, you stole my bed. <laughs> and, uh, how, how do, now you're 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 massive. So from going from basically nothing to being massive on the globe, how uh, how do you deal with it? Um, was that? What is Jay loves a PD. It's a it's bar. A PD. The PD's a bar. It's a bar in right the corner. It's a logo bar. <laughs> it's a great bar, to be honest. Yeah. Shouldn't be saying that in the Davenish, for sure. <laughs> no, that shit was over very quickly. Um, definitely not drink, because I remember we went to um, 
We were here, remember? The we didn't hear? My wedding? Yo, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah this man got really that drunk in the Dabney. Yeah. I had to get sent home in a taxi. <laughs> now I'm sitting at the front like that. <laughs> Just limp. <laughs> um, uh, for me, um, I feel like one thing I've remembered with every like success I've had or any crowd I've performed in front of is like, remember that you love what you do. Like, mm. because that's the thing that you easily forget when things change. Um, or on your way up, you start to f focus more on trying to win. And that's what everyone can do in their lives where they're like, oh, I need to be bigger than Taylor Swift. Yeah, yeah. And if your focus is being bigger than Taylor Swift, you forget that I fucking love what I do. Why am I trying to chase this thing that I never cared about in the first place? Mm -hmm. And so for me, with every success I've had, um, it's been like a lesson of me reminding myself that I love music and I just want to keep doing it. And then when I arrive at that place, some shit happens that I'm just like, what the fuck? Oh shit, I'm on a song with Zendaya, who my sister used to watch on Disney. Oh. And Look at the name dropping. I was that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just wild shit just starts to happen when, when you like, when you kind of lead with love. Yeah, That's yeah. really the vibe for me. 100%. And, uh, you know, Zendaya, they had that hit show, Euphoria. Did I even watch Euphoria? Woo. I swear there's like some young kids in here like, yeah! yeah. Like, what are you doing watching that show? I was like... <laughs> yeah, you actually acted I, in the film, didn't you? I, I, <laughs> I saw my, um, well, my sister-in-law. Um, I think your daughter was telling me that... She, no, no, who was telling me they love Euphoria? It was, it, yeah, Brana was telling me she loves uh, Euphoria. And I was like, wait, how old are you? Like, <laughs> and... I think it's just, it's one of those shows that's just kind of really uh, connected with like young teens. You don't, you don't have a bit of acting in it, didn't you? you I did. I had a little cameo. Yeah, would you they do? They wanted me to do more, but would I was Would you like, do more? Um, you? what? Acting. <laughs> Hello, sir. <laughs> no, I'm, not, I'm not that guy. I don't no. have it. Um, do you know what? Um, I, it would be fun, but, but um, when, when, when I feel excited about it, if I feel like it's going to be something fun that I could do, I'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. In a biopic of Labyrinth, who plays Labyrinth? What's that? Who, what actor plays Labyrinth in a biopic? No one, man. What are you talking no, about? I play my goddamn self. I play by my damn self. <laughs> 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 no, um, no, I can't think of them. I don't think. No. What, what, what was it? Was Denzel. <laughs> Denzel. Hey, what is somebody? <laughs> Tyrone. <laughs> you know Tyrone's in a film in the Mary Kelp? You! Tyrone was in a lead movie back in the day. It was in a on, lead bro. movie. Yeah. Or he was the lead star, star in a movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but let's not talk about that. This, <laughs> this is a Labyrinth's turn. Yeah, the Labyrinth's turn. Not show. me. But uh, what was it like working, working on you for? Is he doing like a soundtrack for a series? Is it completely different than doing like an album? Yeah, like I said, like, because um, I love making music in all different facets, like, um, I learned how to compose music by like ripping, um, I hope I'm not gonna get in trouble for this, but I used to rip movies off of Lime, um, <laughs> when you could. <laughs> some, sh some people are gonna come after me. You know, straight up, you're, I'm in Andy Town, that's what he said. He's like, hey, you're all right, you're in Andy Town. I was like, yeah, true, you're right. Um, so I used to rip uh, movies and I'd just write music to them. Um, and that's how I kind of learned how to like score music. And so when I got the opportunity with HBO to like score music to a TV show, I was like, can I do this? And I was like, I know I can do this, but being under that kind of pressure was like fucking, yeah. like I was making like 25 songs a week, like just. That's crazy. And just on my own. Um, and I had to learn how to orchestrate like uh, music, like in terms of work with strings, brass sections, and make it sound believable. And I had to just do that shit on my own. But for me, the excitement in it was just that I, um, I it was like the ADHD thing of, of novelty and like yeah. trying to learn some new shit. Yeah, yeah. How, how do you deal with ADHD? ADHD? Um, I don't deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> See, it was <laughs> yeah. Even when I tell people about it, they're like, what the fuck is that? Is it just like that you just forget shit and can't keep your head together? So that's um, it. You yeah, it shit? seems like you do. Um, but um, do you know ADHD is like really amazing for like 
don't know if, if you hear my songs or if you hear my score for Euphoria or my albums, um, it sometimes sounds like somebody that has musical Tourette's. Um, <laughs> and there's like switches and random shit going on. And it's just because like um, my excitement is that I get bored really easily and I constantly need stimulation. And that's the thing with ADHD, you constantly need, yeah. you gotta be running. Um, why, why are you clapping that? <laughs> Has everyone yeah, got it? This is, <laughs> has everyone this, got it? This is turned, this has come from an interview into a fucking support group. <laughs> My name is Labyrinth <laughs> and I have ADHD. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what's your goals going in the future? Like obviously you're doing the tour, the tour's going to be announced soon, is it? What's that? Your tour is going to be announced. Yeah, I'm going to do a tour. I'm definitely coming here without a doubt. Um, I am, uh, I'm going to write a uh, score for a big movie. And I'm going so, to see when you see when yeah. you rate, yeah, for movies or you rate for like series. Do you have to watch them before you rate it, or do you have so, like, okay, example, yes, sometimes, but like, example, like, let's say I was working on Euphoria, and there's this, there's like a, an episode where it's like a fucking dick scene, yeah, and there's just dicks all over the screen, <laughs> very uncomfortable. But I, I, I was making uh, music for that section. And I was just going around in loop because I was just trying to make the right music for it. And then my wife walks in and she doesn't know the projects I'm working on. And she was just like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm working <laughs> on a TV show. And she was like, yeah, what the fuck? And, um, so you kind of got to deal with a lot of that as well, uh, as well as if you don't love what you're working on, which yeah. I make sure I always love what I'm working on. But if you don't, um, you got a loop on some shit you fucking hate. Yeah, yeah. Well, what I've always wanted to ask you is where your name Labyrinth has came from. Labyrinth is a bone in your ear that turns vibration into sound. So that's oh, how. You hey. oh, that's <laughs> every day is a school day. Yeah. What? Hey, I said every day is a school day. You learn something new <laughs> all the time. <laughs> but you know, I'm looking forward to the, the tour to be honest, Tim, because I always love just like tagging along after you do the show, like many. I don't want people showing up at my door now, the next Belfast Labyrinth show, but we always have the after party back in my house. And, uh, you know, one time, remember you were doing the Jingle Bowl? Yeah, and we, yeah. all, we all went out, me and Tim and JLS, all went to, Woo! yeah, name dropping, you know. <laughs> and uh, we went to uh, Ollie's. Was it, was it Ollie's? Yeah. And uh, we, were in, we were in the fucking... We went down, it was about half twelve after the show, and everyone came out with the cameras, the manager, people I've never seen before, and going, well, Tommy, how are you? Great to see you, come on in. Give us bottles, everything, and I was like, this is fucking brilliant, this is the life. The next week, me and Tyrone went down, get knocked back. Knocked back from the place, not the night, lads. You the fuck he goes here last week? Whiskey and shit, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Sick. Uh, so. Even 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 today, so we've done this field a few times. Now once have we ever got a phone go here? Do you want sandwiches and beers and all put up at the top? As soon as the album is announced, they feel all, all the phone. Spread up Do up. you want to spread? We'll get your sandwiches, we'll get your crisp, we'll get your chocolate, we'll get your wine. And it's like, what the fuck's going on here? It's, it's a labyrinth effect. Yeah, it's fucking a labyrinth we need, effect. We need to get more more people like labyrinth on this show. You yeah, get treated yeah. like lord royalty. I'll make some phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah folks this is I don't care what anyone says this has to be the best night of the field yeah. but since Labyrinth grew up basically in Belfast L I'd say Lana Dune's favourite nephew we're new, new name Chocolate Boy we're going to hit him with a few Belfast slangs and see can he decipher what we're talking yeah, about. Bro, it's been a long time. What the fuck? I like, don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> you talk to Tommy enough. All right, let's go. Right, here we go. You know, Toron always says to me, I talk different when I'm talking to black you people. Do, you do, you <laughs> do. He talks completely <laughs> different. But right, first Belfast slang. I want you to work out. Let's bake school and get a swell. Let's bake school and get a swell. What the fuck are you <laughs> talking about? Say it but let's bake school and get a swell. Bake school and get a swell. Uh, bake school and get a swell. Yeah, what do you think? The, you, you have zero clue? Zero. Anybody, anybody want to enlighten? 
Are you talking about getting a drink? Yes. Uh, Skip school and get a drink. Yeah, that's what I... Okay. Cool. Uh, okay, that's come that's on. Like, Why are you saying that? Are you yeah, saying that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Done, done. A couple of smicks stroked my gutties. Bro, do you know what? You don't even have to you don't even have to tell me. I know every one of them is about getting a fucking drink after some shit. No, that's what it's <laughs> not about drink. Not about drink. Couple of smicks stroked my gutties. Wait, go on, go on. A couple of smicks stroked my gutties. Okay, a couple of chicks. Rub my couple smicks. Of smicks. <laughs> couple of smicks. Smicks. Smicks, yeah. Smack. The fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> that means they're chavs. Smicks are chavs. Okay, okay, okay. So a couple of chavs. Trying to give them away before you have to guess. He, he's never going to get red. smicks. Okay, right. A couple yeah, of chavs go. stroked my goddies. Goddies. Yeah. Is what? that your, your, your cojones? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, do you know, stroked is such a Belfast word, right? Now, stroked means to steal something. Oh, still, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, that means whatever's so. like, a couple of. A couple of, like. A couple of chaps like stole my shoes. Okay, right? shoes. But you know, shoes. I was in America when I was about 14 with my daddy, right? We went yeah. to Florida. And we used to go to this place. At an evening, we went to all the theme parks in the day, and then in the evening, we went to this place called Disney Planet. And Disney Planet was a big arcade. And uh, me and my dad used to have this competition on the basketball machines who could score the most hoops. And every time it was getting close, he would stroke one of the basketballs out of my head, so I was just stealing on him. And we'd been there for about a week, and he was doing this. And this night, we we're playing, I was winning. He stroked one of the, the balls out of my eyes and I went, Daddy, would you stop stroking my balls? <laughs> the whole place just went silent. <laughs> and went, You've been doing it all week and it's doing my head in. <laughs> and I just heard this American woman go, <gasps> And my, my daddy went, services. Wait, it's up, it's only a game. <laughs> And then this American woman walked over, put her arms around me and went, it's not a game. <laughs> it's abuse. <laughs> uh, uh, true story. That's a true story. And then uh, the security came That's running so up, wrestled my daddy to the ground. The manager got on the wall, he talked, he was like, we need Florida PD here urgently. <laughs> we got a pedophile on the floor. I say, no, 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 you've got it all mixed up. And I say, no, it's okay, son. That man won't be stroking you anywhere ever again. <laughs> Great. <laughs> That's true. That's a fucking... That a story. Everyone just laughs. Everyone goes, oh, you're flat in the comedy, but people just laugh at my, at my life. Yeah. Fuck's sake. So, you can say that laugh. so hey, hey, we've got one more. We've got another bit of Belfast well, slang for you, Tim. He got gripped by the pillars because he was whapped till the chaps. Uh, he got taken by the police because yeah. he was fucked up. Yeah! At least, At least one. At least one. Just one. Happy days. Right, folks? The, my the, the, the second one, I thought somebody was stroking balls, but <laughs> thank God. I got one. Now, Tim. Thanks very much for coming yeah, on board. Thank you for having me. Omelie Omelie Omelie. Woo! Only whiskey and weight can bring you Labyrinth, Ambo Kikati, and Paddy McDonald on the same stage. What? Woo! On a Freddy Frog and Ned. So, have you got any, any closing statements? That's it. <laughs> One at a time. One at a time. We ain't got the time. Do you want me to sing? I can sing. What is I'll it? sing if you want. Yeah, go on, go on. Go on, <laughs> hey. go on we'll back it up. Ooh. <laughs> go on, go on. Listen. So, no. Right, go ahead. Throw on the, you have the floor. Ladies and gentlemen, this is something they call a groundbreaker. Yeah. So let me first apologize to the shirts and the ties for your makeup. What? Cause I'll make you ugly As soon as it drops We're on a rampage Bottles popping up Before you know it There's rubble and dust Cause we'll be fucking it up Somebody say You will what?
Let me hear you say it. Woo! <laughs> say, because we throw, we throw, we just, yeah, much for me. Say, yeah. Yeah. Give it up for Lava Blades in that world. What they call them? Folks, that's it for the night. Make some noise. Lava and Nicky Catty. Money McDonald. Folks, see you fall. Good night, go blast. Going all the way. <laughs>